Okay, on the first set of questions, uh, remember the, the, the most important thing to consider is, you know, be able to define population, be able to define sample. I know we had a discussion about B and C possibly are the two answers. Um, I think either one of them could, could very well be the answer. Um, on number three, know what the variable is. Make sure you understand uh, whether it's um, explanatory or... Um, I'm sorry, not explanatory, but uh, categorical or quantitative. Uh, when you look at number four, again, it's asking uh, which of the following best describes the variables. Again, there were three categorical and two quantitative. So remember, uh, quantitative, you can take the average, and categorical or like, say, um, uh, types of cars or colors, things like that, things that you can't take a, a average of. Um, on number five, uh, the quantitative variable, so you're just basically having to uh, uh, pick out which ones are quantitative and, again, which ones are categorical. On uh, number six, uh, basically the, different, the biggest difference between observational study and experiment. Remember, an experiment is a specific treatment is imposed. In the observational study, no treatment is imposed, and basically there's no interference. You're just observing. Um, Number seven, um, it basically says, uh, which of the following best describes the results? Well, if you take 40 different samples, we've already established that the or the percentage is going to be 60%. So 40 different samples are, could possibly give 40 different uh, uh, percentages, but they should all be relatively close to 60%. Um, on number, what kind of graph should you use to describe the distribution of earnings? In this case, we're going to use a histogram. Remember, a histogram uh, is ranges, so you can have a range of salaries. Uh, on number nine, it's roughly symmetric. Uh, sorry, roughly skewed left. Uh, on number ten, the remember the if the average is um, if the median is going to be about right here the average is going to be a little bit further to the right so the average will be where the blue line is so the average will be clearly to the, uh, uh, less than the average or clearly less than the median on number 11 uh, because it's skewed you're going to use the five number summary to describe it on number 12 uh, we're talking about uh, adding um, adding five to each value well, what happens is when you have it have this right here Whenever you add 5, you're simply taking all your values and adding 5 to it. So it's not going to change the shape. Sorry. Uh, it's not going to change the shape. You're still going to have all the values. They're just going to move to the right 5. So you're going to have the same spread. It just the, the average is going to be higher. So that's why the answer choice is E. On number 13, uh, here's a little. It turns out that these students consume an average. So average of 6.25 and a median of 4. Well, if you have a median of 4 and 6.25, that means the X bar is going to be to the right of the median. And that means skewed right. So the one that's skewed right is C. Okay. On number 14, it says uh, if the bar graph is to be accurate, you got to make sure that all the bars are the same width. That's why D is the answer. On number 15, which of these statements about the standard deviation is true? Well, all of them are true except for C because... Uh, S is a number that has no unit of measurements, okay? The standard deviation does have the unit of measurement. Now, on 16, it says about how many students score above. Well, remember, above 39, these are called quarters. So that's 25%, uh, 25%, 25%, and 25%. Well, if we're using 25%, that means this part is 75%, and 75.75 times 400, a total of 416 would give you 312. And then finally, on number 17, uh, the five number summary, um, what would be the maximum possible length of the right side whisker? Well, basically, you, that tells you you're, you're looking for um, outliers. Remember, outliers to the right would be Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. Well, in this case, uh, Q3 is 40 plus 1.5 and the IQR in this case is, remember, it's your Q3 minus your Q1. So 40 minus 18, which is 22. <laughs> and then one and a half of that uh, would be 33. So 40 plus 33 would give you an outlier of 70, or would give you a 73. So if you were to choose, if you from your 
Q3, which is 40, out to 73, that's a distance. Uh, again, that's your Q3. So you'd have a whisker about that. So that'd be a, uh, a length of 33, which is A. Okay, on number 18, which of the following is likely to have a mean that is smaller than the median? Well, if it's looking for a mean, an average that is smaller to the median, we're going to look for this right here. That means it's going to be skewed to the left. Uh, so in this case, uh, the answer choice of E, the scores of students on a very busy, uh, on a very easy exam in which mostly get nearly perfect scores. So if you have a list of uh, exams, let me go ahead and minimize this real quick. So if you have a graph of exams, well, here's your exams and here's 100, here's zero. And if most everybody is right here, well, and not very many people score low grades, that's why you're going to have a skew to the left. On uh, number 19, if you look at the two graphs, okay, here's the female and then here's the male. Well, the male is wider, so it's going to have a wider variability. And then the average uh, males is going to be uh, bigger. That's why D is the answer. And then on question number 20 for normal distribution, let me go ahead and blow that up. Let me uh, get rid of this right quick. Um, if you look at this, on number 20, for normal distribution with an average of 20 and standard deviation of 5, what percent of the observations will fall between 5 and 35? That's your empirical rule. So basically, if you were to draw that, again, here would be 20, 1, 2, 3 standard deviations, 1, 2, 3 standard deviations. Well, that's 25, 30, 35. That's three standard deviations to the right. And then 15, 10, 5. That's three standard deviations to the left. Empirical rule says that is 99.7, which is D. On number 21, uh, basically two measures of center are marked. Well, because it's skewed to the right, uh, this one is going to be your median. That means this is going to be your average, and the answer choice is A. On number 22, um, it says what percentage of the items will weigh less than 88 grams. So basically, if you're looking at your empirical rule um, and you draw your graph, you're going to see that C is your answer. All right. Uh, number 23, which of the following is least likely to have a, a nearly normal distribution? And that would be D. Every, everything else indicates that all these kids are about the same age, about the same size, same birthday. So family incomes, you have some kids who might get scholarships and some kids who come from wealthy families. Well, that means they're going to have a wide variety of salaries from their parents or incomes from their parents. So that's why D is the uh, uh, nearly least likely to have a normal distribution. On number 24... Uh, basically, what was Wayne's actual Z, uh, score? Remember, you have to do this. You have to do Z is equal to X minus X bar over the standard deviation. Okay? I've given you the Z score because it says the standard score is 0.07. And then you have an average of 18 and a standard deviation of 6. So basically, remember what you do is you take your point, negative 0.07 equals... Uh, x minus 18 over the standard deviation of 6. Well, you're just solving for 18, so uh, when you multiply 6 on both sides, you get negative, uh, I'm sorry, that's 0.7, not 0.07. You get negative 4.2 equals x minus 18. Well, when you add 18 to both sides, you end up getting 13.8 uh, equals x, and that's why d is your score. On number 25, uh, let me go ahead and blow that up. Let me erase these things right here. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of these things. Okay. Oops, I didn't want to do that. On Okay, number 26 from this normal curve. Uh, basically, uh, we're looking for the average well, if you look in the middle, the average is going to be about 190. So it's a little to the left of 200, so it's about 190. Uh, and then again, um, we see the standard deviation. So we're looking for the standard deviation in this case. Remember, and when you're looking for the standard deviation, if you'll look right where the curvature changes, just to the right of 250, uh, that distance could, or actually it's about 50. So if you have 15 plus, it's going to be closest to 65.
Okay, it's not exact because you can't really see the numbers too well. All right, uh, which of the following are true statements? Uh, in this case, it, it is B, number one and two. In all bell, uh, normal distributions, the average and median are equal. Uh, remember, whenever it's uh, whenever it's like this, the the x bar will be here and the median will be here. And then all bell-shaped curves are normal distributions, no matter what the particular average and standard deviations. So um, we call this normal. And uh, let's go to number twenty-eight. Let me go ahead and erase all this stuff here. And now number twenty-nine. Uh, what it's really asking you to do uh, on number twenty-nine is basically which country has the higher percentage of women taller than 167 if you will find the z-score on both of them okay remember x minus x bar over standard deviation x minus oh sorry let me erase that uh, if you'll do that for both of them x minus x bar over standard deviation you will find that the percentages are going to be about the same on number 30 which of the following would be a correct interpretation if you have a z-score of plus two that means it's two standard deviations uh, to the to the right or above the mean, so that's going to be answer E. Okay, that's going to be answer E. Uh, this was C. Number thirty one. It's asking which of the values below is nearest to the patient's actual blood pressure. Well, first of all, it gives you uh, the X bar. It gives you standard deviation, but it doesn't give you the X. That's what you're looking for. Now, it does give you the p-value because it says the lowest 10%. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to use that 10% and convert it to a z-score. And then once you do that, you're going to solve for x. In the, this case, the answer is going to be 106. Okay, on number 32, you're going to use this line of best fit right there for, the, for number 32 and 33. Now, it says, as a pr prediction, when the temperature is 20 degrees, the well, only thing you have to do is plug in 20 for X. And in this case, you get D for the answer. And when the temperature goes up 1 degree, what happens to the gas usage? Uh, it goes down 19 cubic feet. That's referring to the slope. Okay, that's referring to the slope there. Now, remember, when you're dealing with correlation, okay, correlation, both A and C will not affect it. So changing it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, so when you change the unit of measure, and also measuring gas usage in hundreds of cubic feet so that all values of Y are divided by 100. So if, you, if you're consistent with all your data, again, that's not going to affect your uh, correlation either. Uh, number 35, basically, the uh, we expect to see uh, between the weight uh, blank between the weight of a student and the test score. Remember, the heavier the student is, the higher the score should be. So there should be a positive association on this one uh, because we are dealing with uh, ages or grades one through six. That means, uh, and it's a third grade test. So the older you are, the heavier you're going to be, as well as the smarter you should be. So you should score a higher, higher score if you're older. On number 36, it's asking you which one would you put on the horizontal axis. That's going to be uh, your X value. So in this case, it's the hours of television because it explains uh, the grade uh, that the children score. On number 37, uh, the correlation between hours of TV and reading score must be. Well, remember in this case, we're talking about 9%, so that's R squared. Well, if you want to find R, so that would be 0 0.09, well, you got to square it. And so R is going to be about 0.3. But remember, it's a negative correlation in this problem, so the answer would be a negative 0.3, which is the answer of D. Now, remember, on number 38, it's asking uh, the correlation and slope. It's kind of, uh, it is true that they both have the same sign. In other words, if the correlation is positive, a strong positive correlation, then you're going to have a, a positive slope. If it's a negative correlation, you're going to have a negative slope. Uh, on number 39, if there is something genetic that made people simultaneously more susceptible to both smoking and lung cancer, this would be an instance of common response. Remember, uh, you have an effect of both of these. All right. Now, on number 40, we're talking about, it gives us a correlation of 0.945. That's a very strong positive correlation. What that means is, uh, if males are illiterate, that means the females are also tend to be illiterate. 
and the relationship is very high. That is why A is the answer. On number 41, it's asking for a very strong negative correlation. Well, number of people showering in a college dorm and the water pressure, the more people there are, the less water pressure there's going to be. On number 42, what is the residual? Now remember, the residual in this case is the change in y, uh, uh, is the distance from the predicted y, so y minus y hat. So the observed y minus the predicted y. And then therefore you would find that it's negative 2.29 because it's below the li uh, line of best fit. So we're looking at 29 here, all right? So the observed y is 25. The predicted y, you'd simply plug in 29 there, and then you would subtract, and that's where you get the negative 2.29. On number 43, if you recall, this is one of the problems that we had. If you remove this line, what would it do to this? Well, if you removed it, that means uh, the slope is going to decrease. That means it's going to go like this, and that means the y-intercept would move up, and the slope would decrease. Okay, on number 44 in a table of random digits, the answer choice is B. Any pair of entries is equally likely to be any of the 100 possible pairs. Uh, remember, 00 through 99, each one of those numbers has the exact same chance as any other two digit number. Now, on number 45, a simple random sample. Uh, in the beginning, Okay, when I first looked at this, I thought B might be the answer. Any sample that gives us gives every individual, well, that's not really true. Yes, it gives every individual the same chance, but what's more accurate is a sample that gives every possible sample uh, of the same size the same chance. So every possible combination gets the same chance to be selected, and that's the definition in the textbook. Uh, bias is any systematic error that tends to occur in the same direction every time you use the sampling method. Um, and number 47, uh, this is, uh, labels the classes as follows. So A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, and E is 5. Starts at the beginning. Notice these are single numbers. So which classes did she, did she select? Well, if you look at the single numbers, that means you're going to look at 1 through 5. That means you're going to ignore 0 and then 6 through 9. Well, the first numbers you get are 1, 5, and 6. All right, so that would be an A an E, and 8 we're going to ignore, 9 we're going to ignore, and then 1 we're going to ignore because it's a duplicate, and then 4. So uh, it would be A, E, the D, and that's why E is the answer. And number 48, when Ann Landers asked, this is the same type of uh, uh, problem we asked. It's a voluntary response, so therefore A is the answer. And then finally, the last three problems, 53% 50 of the pop, uh, people asked, agreed that we should have a third party. The number 53 is the statistic, okay? That's the statistic that they give us. Um, on number 50, again, you're doing three-digit numbers, so the first three digits in the sample. So uh, if you're doing from between 001 to 816, uh, let me go ahead and blow this up for us. And since we are looking for the first three numbers, it's not 967. 461 is our first number. Uh, if you notice, it's not these numbers right here. Um, and then 214, so 461, 214. All right, so four six one two one four. So these numbers, and then the next one, it's not nine three seven, it's not eight two three, but it will be seven one eight, and that's why D is the correct answer. Okay. Now, finally, on the last one, another correct choice of labels for eight sixteen. This was a little tricky. Uh, yes, I've told you to put them in order, but also you can put them in order by student ID numbers. But yet, it still is from zero zero one to eight sixteen.